Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussed the uh, different types of plasticity, mainly structural plasticity and synaptic plasticity and the different types within synaptic plasticity, uh, short term and long term plasticity. So, now we get into the side of modeling and uh, using uh, it in models uh, for the effects of short term plasticity or those that are temporary. So, first of all in order to see short term plasticity we had said that if we uh, measure uh, the post synaptic potential let us say uh, after we pre synaptically produce a spike. Uh, so, this is I am drawing uh, average diagram here we do this multiple times with gap in our gap and measure the post synaptic potential and we had said that there is some manipulation that is being done and then we are measuring again. Actually in the short term plasticity case the manipulation is simply producing another spike and uh, what we can see is that the synaptic strength may reduce here and uh, then with another spike the synaptic strength may reduce even further and with another spike the synaptic strength may reduce even further and be there, but after a delay of undisturbed uh, period um, we do the measurement again with a pre synaptic spike, we measure the post synaptic potential and we get back our original strength. So, this is the same as this. So, we have recovered our original strength and in between we have what we call short term depression that is the synaptic strength is reducing with every subsequent spike. So, it is not necessary that it will happen all the time, but uh, in general uh, many synapses can show uh, short term depression where uh, subsequent spikes uh, produce a short or uh, 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 smaller sized EPSP and there is a weakening of the synaptic strength. And obviously, uh, this is also dependent on the gap between the pre uh, the spikes in the pre synaptic site. Um, so, if we have many uh, closer uh, spikes then uh, we can get even stronger effects of depression or uh, if we make the spikes the pre synaptic spikes much further then we may even end up not seeing any change. So, it is dependent on how much pre synaptic activity we are seeing. So, if this is the pre synaptic activity, uh, then that essentially is going to determine uh, the properties of the short term depression that we are observing. And similarly, instead of short term depression, we can also see uh, short term facilitation or potentiation, where uh, we do have an action potential in the pre synaptic side and the, we measure the EPSP size, let us say this is height of A and the manipulation is producing another spike pre synaptically let us say in within 50 milliseconds 
and we see that the synaptic strength increases and then with another spike uh, we see that the synaptic strength increases further and another spike we see increasing further and later on if we allow the system to remain undisturbed and measure the uh, synaptic strength again we get back our original synaptic strength where this particular EPSP is going to be the same as the last EPSP we are seeing and hence regaining the original synaptic strength that is by measuring the post synaptic potential. So, how do these actually I mean why do this happen? Why is some synapse uh, facilitatory and some synapse, uh, synapse depressive in the short term? So, in order to understand that we usually explain it uh, based on the uh, evidence so far uh, and um, with the idea that there is a limited amount of resource present in the presynaptic side and uh, that is the limited amount of neurotransmitters uh, present in the presynaptic side and that um, may be depleted and with successive action potentials presynaptically. So, this is how it may be thought of that this is the presynaptic terminal as you may recall that there is a synaptic vesicle. Um, that is carrying the neurotransmitter here and uh, it is primed to be or rather it is docked to be released in the uh, synaptic cleft that is the neurotransmitters will be released. So, when there is an action potential presynaptically we know that these uh, neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft many of them go and bind to the receptors on the postsynaptic side um, and cause neurotransmission and uh, after that many are left uh, to be taken back up uh, endocytosed into the endosomes and then back into synaptic vesicles. So, actually the we can think of this as a cyclic process we can say that the to make it a simple model first we say that this pool of vesicles is the recovered pool um, the the pool of uh, rather the pool of neurotransmitters in the vesicles inside the recovered pool. The ones that are effectively producing the postsynaptic potential that is they are being bound to neurotransmitters is called the effective pool. And uh, the ones that are left uh, in the synaptic cleft unused to be taken back up um, is uh, called the ineffective pool. Or inactive pool um, does not matter. And so, uh, it is a three state process that is happening. So, we have uh, neurotransmitter in this which is made to be effective by going here which goes to ineffective and that is cycled back into the recovered pool. Now, the steps that are involved this is they are unidirectional we do not uh, consider that uh, the, the, the backwards flow can happen in this process and uh, the time constants of each of the steps play a crucial role in determining the entire uh, uh, the kinetics or even the short term uh, plasticity. So, 
if we think of this as a three state model that is we have the recovered pool, we have the effective pool and we have the uh, inactive pool. So, we have a time constant here let us say tau r e from e to i we have a time constant tau e i and from i to r we have a time constant of tau i e i r sorry. Now, if we think of uh, the way r is being uh, or rather say r is changing that is d r d t over time. Uh, if this is the concentration of r, so let us say normalized concentration that is uh, r plus e plus i is fixed to 1, that is the uh, total concentration is 1 of the neurotransmitter and r e and i are basically the fractions can be represented as uh, normalized concentration. So, this is r dr dt. So, from i to r we have um, the process is driven by the concentration of i and uh, it is the time constant tau i r and r is reducing due to the flow from r to e which is driven by the concentration of r and the time constant tau r e. Um, there is one missing aspect in this uh, differential equation that we have written for um, dr dt. Uh, it is that all the things are not happening continuously. So, r to e is only happening when there is an action potential. So, when there is an action potential only then the vesicles in the uh, inside of the presynaptic side is going to release the neurotransmitter. So, this uh, rate of um, re reduction in R must be happening only at the time point of um, spikes which may be indicated by u, where this u is generally 0 and will be considered to be um, 1 for a brief 1 millisecond period or some short delta time period um, and uh, then it will go back to 0. That will essentially represent that the depolarization has happened and the calcium comes in and the release recovered pool sends neurotransmitters into the uh, effective pool. So, that is what we are representing by this u um, which can be taken as 1 for the spikes for that small duration. So, now if I have the d e d t um, that is basically being increased due to the flow from the spiking that is u times r by tau r e and is being reduced due to the flow from e to i and that is basically the concentration of e divided by tau e i. So, all are first order kinetics and uh, using this equation we or we can also write from the diagram itself that is d i d t is uh, simply increasing due to e, e by tau e i and uh, it is reducing due to the i itself going to r that is tau i r. So, now with this model if the tau r e is of the order of 1 millisecond, this practically is of the order of 100 milliseconds and this of the order of 
1000 uh, or greater than 1000 milliseconds that is more than a second uh, in uh, multiple seconds that is the time constant. So, this becomes the rate limiting step uh, in the whole process that is if we have an action potential uh, that is this u becomes 1 then uh, r is reduced uh, and uh, that triggers the flow in the, uh, the forward direction from r to e to i to r. So, initially all the neurotransmitter is in r where r is equal to 1 and uh, after that with every spike we are that r is reducing and uh, going into e and i. However, the rate of change of i uh, that is going from i to r is extremely, extremely small because this tau i r is very large and that basically keeps uh, the neurotransmitter in the ineffective to the r pathway in the middle in, in that state. So, it is in i and trying to move on to r. So, very little is actually being uh, going to the recovered pool. So, the reduction in the neurotransmitter is a reason for the synaptic depression to happen when we have many uh, spikes simultaneously in a closed time period. So, every for every spike we get some reduction in the in the postsynaptic potential and we can actually show with this model by simulating it that there is a synaptic depression. So, this uh, synaptic depression model works very well and has been used in multiple models this with this three state model. So, uh, in fact, with uh, this idea uh, we will be discussing one of the consequences of uh, short term depression uh, later on. So, now there may be the, I mean this is only a simple uh, model. Now, there are many other uh, parts of this uh, short term depression and uh, that has to do with the, uh, the calcium that is coming in. If you recall for this u becoming 1, we actually it is based on the calcium coming in due to the spiking. So, this entire model can be further uh, um, modified by qualifying that u and bringing in the calcium concentration explicitly instead of making a 0 1 kind of uh, transfer uh, from re recovery pool to the effective pool. So, in order to do that, uh, I mean the reason why we will do that is actually this above this, this model that we have talked about does not explain short term facilitation, because uh, this only can explain short term depression based on the time constants that we have discussed. And um, so, what, what can we do? I mean basically there is always a probability associated with the release. Uh, that is the synaptic transmission is also probabilistic. And uh, so, overall neurotransmitter available may be N t, but uh, it is now being multiplied by a probability in order to be able to, um, uh, in order to be able to uh, bring in the uh, effect of the calcium, because the calcium is effectively what decides the probability of release. So, actually when we have a lot of activity like this, uh, in small synapses there is a build up of calcium that is the residual calcium hypothesis, where um, due to every action potential the calcium is building up, only some of the calcium is used up in releasing 
the vesicles um, releasing the neurotransmitter in vesicles, whereas in the next action potential due to the remaining calcium and more calcium added up, the calcium concentration increases and hence the probability of release increases and there is an increased uh, number of neurotransmitter released and effectively we have a larger postsynaptic potential. So, if we want to go ahead and include and actually show facilitation, we have to go and explicitly modify that u and bring in this probability term and there will be further other things that need to be included. Uh, there is one more uh, act, uh, aspect here where we can have uh, this R may be broken up into two pools and that is that has its own consequences as well where R is one is the recovered pool and then we can have another state that is a readily releasable pool that is the ones that are only readily releasable that goes into the effective state. So, we can we may be there is no direct path per se uh, as we have had in the model that we have described, but there can be a, an additional stop which is the readily releasable pool and uh, that uh, we will discuss along with the inclusion of the probability term and calcium concentration uh, in our next lecture on short term depression. Uh, short term plasticity. Thank you.